Eighth Street Deli? Hey, hang up. You get food poisoning just talking to that place. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things you should never order in a restaurant. Yeah, so when you think you're innocently eating a little bar snack, you're actually ingesting potentially deadly bacteria from about 39 soil-handed strangers. For this list, we're looking at those items which, for various reasons, you should never order at a restaurant. Did we just ruin your favorite restaurant meal? Let us know what you avoid when you go out to eat. Number 10. Raw Oysters have you ever heard of norovirus and Vibrio? I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, the good news is that if you've never heard of them, it probably means you've never encountered them. Which is good because they are two rather unpleasant foodborne illnesses. They can both be found in raw oysters. And unfortunately, even the freshest and highest quality oysters can be carrying them. You're not gonna ruin this for me. Sorry, Jake, but I'm afraid I have to. You'll thank me later. If after learning this, you still can't give up raw oysters, at least try to only eat them in months that have the letter R in them. Vibrio likes warm weather, so avoiding raw oysters during the summer months gives you a better chance at avoiding any sickness. Are you okay? Oh, no, it's oyster. Number nine. Ice cream. Unlike most entries which attempt to warn you about menu items that might be detrimental to your health, this one could be detrimental to your wallet. You gotta spend money to make money. You see, at many restaurants, the ice cream they serve is taken right from a store-bought container at a marked-up price. Those bastards! Yeah! Oh my god! Sons of bitch! So what are we gonna do? We had to beat them at their own game. If you really want ice cream, why not stop by a grocery store on your way home and get a full bucket for what the restaurant will charge you for two servings? Now, if the place makes their own ice cream, then there could be some foodie value there. But otherwise, just wait until you get home. But I'm hungry now! Yeah, yeah I'm hungry too! Yeah! Who put the Duchess of Dork in charge? Number eight, the bread basket. These days, in order to cut costs, some restaurants won't provide bread to a table unless the customer asks for it. Tap water's fine. And we'll take a basket of your freest bread. If it were us, we wouldn't ask for it. Nor would we eat from it were it provided to the table. Trust us, we understand how awesome and tempting that bread basket is. But here's the problem. It might be someone else's bread basket. Busboy sees a basket of untouched looking bread. Chances are he's bringing it right back into the kitchen, turning it around, and sending it out to you. You see, according to Deborah Ginsburg, who wrote a book back at the turn of the century about her 20 years as a waitress, sometimes they take leftover bread from other baskets to make a new one, which means a previous table could have been manhandling the bread you're now buttering up. Well, I'm not eating bread now, I'm off bread. <laughs> Number seven, hollandaise sauce. Yeah, we realize we're putting a major dagger in your Sunday brunch plans, but we're only doing it because we care. Don't just take our word for it. To quote famed chef Anthony Bourdain from his classic tell-all kitchen confidential, quote, bacteria love hollandaise. So you gotta be careful around this stuff. Any place you eat hollandaise should throw it out about every hour and make a fresh batch. Given how busy a restaurant can get during the breakfast and brunch rush, most places aren't making their hollandaise sauce to order. This hollandaise smells like burnt rubber. If they were to make it earlier and store it in the fridge, it would break. So what's probably happening is that the pre-made sauce is, quote, made hours ago and held on station at room temperature, which makes it primed for bacterial growth. Mm, sounds delicious. It's not. Number six, the soup special. No soup for you. <laughs> the soup special, or the soup of the day, is often very tempting whether it's announced to you by your waiter or in a cool handwritten font on the hip chalkboard on the restaurant wall. But before you order it, there's probably something you should know. What is the soup du jour? It's the soup of the day. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. I'll have that. The soup special is a bit of a restaurant magic trick in that they use it to make leftovers and the previous day's scraps disappear. We're not saying the stuff is expired or gone bad, but just because the soup is from that day doesn't mean the ingredients are. Also, as Chef Gordon Ramsay knows, sometimes the soup of the day is actually the soup of the week. What's the soup of the day? The soup of the day is jalapeno corn chowder. Mm -hmm. What was it yesterday? Jalapeno corn chowder. Oh, so it's soup every two days. And last week? Oh, so soup of the week. It's soup of the week. Number five, ice. Whether it's water or a 20-year-old scotch, if you're getting it at a restaurant, you don't want to order it on the rocks. A scotch neat for a Mr. Vorhees. A scotch Vor neat for Mr. Vorhees. 
Well, thank you, Yuko. Unless maybe you mean actual rocks because the stones in your drink would probably be cleaner than the ice. Often, the ice going into your drink was made in an ice machine. And while convenient, those machines can get pretty dirty if not cleaned regularly, which sadly doesn't happen as much as you'd want. In fact, a 2013 study found that in a number of fast food restaurants, the ice in the machines contained more bacteria than the water in the bathroom toilets. Ugh. I survived on hand soap and toilet water for three days. The memory haunts me. Number four, salad bar. They might not be as exciting as make your own Sunday bars, but salad bars are still quite enticing. Howard, are you having a make your own Sunday bar? Uh, I don't think so. Well, you should. 50% of marriages end in divorce, but 100% of make your own Sunday bars end in happiness. Being able to pick from all the many lettuce and veggie options is a delicious prospect. However, remember that everyone else is picking from it also. And just because you might be good about using the available tongs and utensils doesn't mean everyone else is. Humans are filthy, dirty filthy. We shudder just to think how kids are handling the various items on display. Not to mention that proper temperature control is required to avoid bacteria growth. Also, do you really want to be picking food from a place that requires the use of something called a sneeze guard? That's the sneeze guard. You have to lean under it to get salad or sneeze on stuff. Number three, mussels. Dookie, yeah. I beg of you, do not order the fresh mussels. But, but if they're fresh, even if they're fresh. Are you eating at a restaurant where you know the chef personally? If you aren't, then late great chef Anthony Bourdain would advise against ordering the mussels. The problem with mussels is that as delicious as they are, just one bad one can make you quite sick. And unfortunately, many restaurant chefs don't take the time to check all the mussels to make sure they're only cooking up the good ones. I handpick every piece of shellfish myself. Oh yeah? You smelling them as you're picking them or you're staring off into space? So unless you know the chef and know they do this, maybe skip this one. And if you know them and you know they don't, then really skip this one. Oh, it was the mussels. They came up undigested. They came up undigested. How could they be the cause? It's where my body shut down. It Self-protection. Number two, raw sprouts. For such an innocuous little ingredient, you may be surprised to know how potentially dangerous it can be. You see, the conditions required to grow sprouts call for rather humid temperatures, and unfortunately, that humid environment is also good for growing salmonella, listeria, and E. coli. I guess that summer working at Burrito Basement was worth the E. coli. Fans of the Jimmy John's sandwich chain may recall that back in 2018, the company removed them from all their locations after a rash of foodborne illness claims was traced back to the Little Sprouts. Here's a headline. Food poisoning scare sweeps city. Some food got poisoned? I'm a little nauseous, yeah. The ones labeled ready to eat that you buy at the store are fine, but it's probably not worth the risk ordering them at a restaurant. What can I say? <laughs> Sometimes I like to live dangerously. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, drink garnishes. Most of us probably don't spend much time thinking about the lemon and lime wedges in our drinks, but according to experts, we definitely should. Think about the bartender and the odds that they cleaned their hands before cutting the fruit. Why are, they, why are their hands dirty? On average, only one out of every six people wash their hands when they go to the bathroom. Or think about how long ago they were cut up and if the unused slices were stored properly. Now think about the Journal of Environmental Health study that tested lemon garnishes at 21 different restaurants and found that nearly 70% of them showed microbial growth. Growth that could possibly have come from, to quote the study, the fingertips of a restaurant employee via human fecal or raw meat or poultry contamination. Not so fast. Wash your hands, that's disgusting. We're not sure we even want a little umbrella in our drink after reading that. I hope the bathroom is clearly marked. Doesn't matter, he's headed for the kitchen anyway. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.